Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Rachel. Welcome to another reading vlog. I am going to be spending the week reading my greatest literary love, which is fantasy romance. And I have quite a few on my TBR that I want to knock out. I've also been noticing a lot more fantasy romances popping up in my Instagram feed on Goodreads, all of that. So I have quite a few options. I'm not exactly sure all of the books that I'm going to be reading in this video as of now. I'm just kind of going to mood read through my fantasy romance TBR and we'll see what we come up with. I will say though, the first book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog I do know what it is and I'm very excited for it and that is going to be The Witch Collector by Sharissa Weeks. This is a book that I've wanted to read for so long. I have almost put it on so many TBRs. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet, but it's time. This book, it always comes up on Goodreads, on Instagram, on YouTube. I just see it everywhere and it's time for me to finally dive in. This book follows a main character whose sister was kidnapped by The Witch Collector like 24 years ago and then our main character has basically been preparing her whole life to avenge her sister's disappearance, find her, kill the witch collector, this, that, and the other. And once the witch collector does come to her kingdom, I believe that she ends up having to begrudgingly team up with him, but thinks, oh, I'm going to get close to him and then I can kill him. But then feelings are going to get involved. And I think we're going to have a little bit of enemies to lovers. So that's my general understanding of the book. I think that sounds really fun. And I am just really, really looking forward to reading this. So I hope that I love this. I'm going to start with this one today and I have very high hopes. I also have some book mail that I wanted to open with you guys. I think that most of these are fantasy romances. So so this book unboxing might influence my TBR for the week. I'm really excited to see these in person and hopefully get some new faves out of this. So let's open them. So the first book is, oh my gosh, yes. Okay. Ooh, she's thick. All right. The Crown of Oaths and Curses. If you watched my recent 24 hour readathon vlog, which definitely should already be up, I read two novellas called The Scepter and the Sword, which are the prequel novellas to this first book. And I believe this whole series, which is called the Mortal Fates series. It's a new fantasy romance series, by Jay Bree. Jay Bree wrote the very popular Broken Bond series, which I believe is kind of like a paranormal reverse harem romance series. I tried reading that series, but it wasn't really for me, but I did want to give this series a try because I've been hearing a lot of great things. And this is like a totally different series and kind of subgenre within fantasy romance from the Broken Bond series. And I read the two novellas and I have to say, I was very intrigued. I also think this cover is really, really stunning. All right, so I have a few books in here. The first one is not a fantasy romance, but it is The Fiance Farce by by Alexandria Bellaflor. This is the newest release from this author. And she wrote Written in the Stars, which is a sapphic romance based in Seattle. Absolutely love it, gave it five stars. And she has just published another sapphic romance. I'm gonna guess maybe there's like fake dating arranged marriage situation going on, but I'm very, very excited to read this. I think I'm gonna read this this month. And I hope that I love it as much as Written in the Stars. I think her writing style is really, really great. I think she writes Spice very well. And I just loved the characters in Written in the Stars. So hopefully love this. Okay, next is a Court This Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. I believe this recently came out. I don't know too much about this. My friend Ami at Ami Reads, she reached out to me and was like, hey, you should read this. I started it, it's pretty good. So I decided to buy a physical copy. The back says, for years when I fell asleep, I dreamed of a man with blazing green eyes and a cruel smile. We're already off to a good start. The day I meet him, the ruthless mercenary leaves me for dead. Okay, I'm intrigued. I'm excited by it. Sounds like we're gonna have an enemies to lovers situation. I, God, I wanna read this too. I want to read everything right now. That's my problem. I have a lot of amazing books on my TBR, but I'm also like, what if I just completely deviate and read something else? I don't know. And then the last book is super stunning. So this is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I'm going to be buddy reading this with my friend Nadia at Books and Drafts. And we're going to be reading this, I think towards the end of the month. So I'm not going to be reading this now, but this is supposed to be an academic rivals to lovers and it's fantasy romance. So I'm very excited. I have heard some people talking about this, buzzing about it, saying it's really fantastic. And ooh, the tagline is no God, no creature, no war can come between them. Love. That sounds so cool. All right, so very excited about all of those. But the first book, as I said, that I'm going to be reading for this fantasy romance vlog is The Witch Collector. So I'm gonna start this today and I will check in with you guys in a little bit and let you know my first thoughts. Hi friends, how are we? It is time for my first check-in for this video. I did just film this check-in but my audio was not on. Isn't that so cute that I forgot to turn my mic on? Love, 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 love. So I'm going to try to rehash all of my thoughts again because um, I feel like I did a pretty good job of describing the book. And I swear one of the hardest things about 
doing booktube is just giving an accurate synopsis of a book which you would think that that wouldn't be such an issue but i have a lot of trouble with it sometimes so i am very excited to talk to you all about the witch collector i'm like 22 percent in i want to say so still you know early on in the book and i do want to be cautious about my check-in here about sharing my thoughts with you all because i have been known to particularly with fantasy romance i have been known to absolutely love the beginning of a book and then by the end be super disappointed disappointed and be like eh, three stars. I am an optimistic little bitch, okay? Always have been, always will be. If I'm excited about a book, no matter where I'm at in it, I, I want to share that excitement with you all. But I do just want to like kind of tiptoe into this excitement for now. So I do just want to say this is going very well at the moment. I am particularly really excited about the writing style, the world building, our main character, and this overall kind of plot that we have. I think it's unique. I think it's interesting. I think that the world building is really good. It's a lot actually. Like Sharissa Weeks is building a world inside of this book. She's not just writing a romance in a fantasy world. She is actually building an interesting fantasy plot and then also kind of setting the groundwork for a romance. So I'm very excited about that. That is my biggest thing with fantasy romance and just some of the issues that I have with the genre that I love so much is I need an interesting plot. I need an interesting world. I don't just want romance in a fantasy setting. And so far this is delivering on that and I'm very excited about that. Briefly, I'm going to tell you guys what this book is about. There's a lot going on, so I'll, I'll try to keep it kind of light, but Reyna is our main character character. And Reyna is a witch and she lives in this village, in this kingdom, amongst all these other witches. And they live in this kind of society where a witch collector comes. I don't know if it's every year or every few years, but this witch collector comes and he takes one of the witches for the Frost King. And no one really knows what he does with the witches, but everyone in the village kind of just takes this as like, yeah, this is our life. This is the sacrifice that we make to the gods. It's whatever. But Reyna is like, no, absolutely not. We should not be taking this. We should not be accepting this. This is wrong. And particularly, Reyna has a specific connection to this because her sister was taken 24 years ago. So Reyna, for the past two decades, has been prepping. She has been in her reputation era and she has been like, I am going to prep myself to train, to do all of these things because I want to take the witch collector down so that the next time I see him, I'm gonna, you know, do that because that's what he deserves. So the day finally comes, the witch collector comes and Reyna is like pumping herself up. She has this God knife, which is allegedly able to kill any being immortal or not. And she thinks I'm, I'm ready to do this. But when the witch collector arrives, another evil entity arrives and that is the East Landers. And they kind of have a reputation and have been sort of waging this war on everyone, not just on where Reyna is located, but even the witch collector is like, oh, I don't want anything to do with these guys. We have to fight them. You know, I don't mean any harm to this village. I'm just doing this witch collecting thing. Reyna and the witch collector actually kind of like team up and are like battling against all of these Eastlanders and trying to protect the village. And essentially a lot of things go down. Reyna's kind of whole life blows up in front of her and she and the witch collector sort of end up off in the forest together and they don't really know what they're gonna do, but they kind of have this begrudging team up moment. And that's where I'm at right now. Like they just kind of are coming to and realizing, oh my God, okay, we just went through this crazy thing. Now the two of us are together. What are we gonna do now? Reyna is very, very obviously fearful and cautious of the witch collector, but we get his POV, which I love. I freaking love dual POV in a romance. So I'm very happy about that. So the witch collector's name is Alexis. And I don't know the reason why he does the witch collecting. I still don't know like what the motivation is there, but he seems to be not actually that bad of a guy. We'll see. I'm thinking that there's a lot more to the story here. So things I'm liking about this book. Number one, Reyna. She's a badass. I really like her. She is funny. She is strong. She is interesting. Reyna was also born without the ability to speak. And so she does sign, which I think is a really fantastic addition to this book. I don't feel like I've read that representation, particularly in a fantasy novel. I want to get this right because the author does make a note of this because there's so many different sign language, right? There's American Sign Language, there's British Sign Language, and they're completely different. So for ease of reading, the fictional sign language in this novel reads as if it were S-E-E, -E, which is signing exact English. Yeah, I just think that Reyna is the coolest. She's beautiful, she's amazing, she's witch. I am obsessed with her. And then, as I said, the world building and 
info dumping, which can kind of have a negative connotation, but I'm kind of saying it as a compliment at this moment. I feel like we've built a really, really interesting world magic system. We have witches, we have all these different kind of warring kingdoms. We have all of this kind of history with gods and lore. I'm still learning more about that. So I'm very excited to see where things go, what the motivations of different kingdoms are with the wars. What's the witch collector's motivation? I don't really know what he does. I'm very curious about where Reyna's sister is and like, what's her whole deal? What's her whole opinion on everything? Is she okay? Hey, I don't know. But overall, I am really, really liking this book and I have been very, very impressed thus far. That's the update for now. I'm excited to keep reading. I definitely want to check in with you guys, maybe when I'm at like the 50 or 60% mark, but this is really strong so far. I'm holding myself back from ordering books two and three because I need to make sure that I actually like this book before I buy the whole series, but I want to so badly because I'm feeling good, but I don't know. I'm not saying anything yet though. So I am going to uh, go right now and I'm just going to sit down and read a bit more of The Witch Collector and I will talk to you guys once I have a little bit more to say. Hello, angel besties. Happy Tuesday. Oh my God. I am here to give you guys an update, obviously. I am in the thick of it. I am in the trenches with The Witch Collector, in a good way. What I mean by that is I am on page like 287 and this book has like 340 pages. The scene that I'm in the middle of right now is bonkers. It is just absolute chaos. Things are going insane. I'm nervous, but I'm having such a good time. I'm so excited, you guys, about this book. Oh my God, I just am feeling very good feelings about this so far. I've really, really enjoyed my time reading it. It is such a rich world. I'm so curious about everything. We have the involvement of gods, which I freaking love in a fantasy book because it just makes the stakes so much higher. So I'm super, super happy about that. The romance is super, super enjoyable. I'm nervous about things in that department, but it's been very enjoyable. I just love particularly too with a fantasy romance when things start out very simple, right? We have a very simple kind of plot laid out where, oh, this girl has been plotting to kill this witch collector her whole life. And finally he comes, but then everything goes awry and things go crazy. And you know, they've kind of had to begrudgingly team up. When I tell you that that is just like, scratching the surface of everything that this book contains and where the plot is actually gonna go. It's it's a whole new world, okay? It's so amazing. I'm just very, very excited about it. I do have a critique. Even though I'm loving it, we can critique the things that we love. I think that that's very good. That's very healthy. I think that there was kind of the middle section of this book. She was a little slow. Not the whole middle, but there was just like, honestly, just, I don't know, maybe around like the, the 50 to 60% mark. I was kind of like, okay, like, come on. I think like something more exciting should happen. <laughs> I need to be careful what I wish for because things have been going crazy. So I do think that there was like a little bit of a pacing issue in the middle, but not something that is like a huge concern for me, just something of note. I think that this book just doesn't have the most perfect pacing, but I'm loving the pacing now, which is all gas, no breaks, bus, club, another club, another club. Like it is, it's insanity. I just feel like this book is going to end in a horrible slash wonderful way, like for entertainment value. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I did order the second book today because I'm like, I have to read the second book soon. So I think I'm gonna add that to my July TBR because I just feel like this series is, it's gonna go in really cool places. And we have tons of characters too. I, ugh, I can't tell you like who my favorite character is because it's very spoilery, but they are just very witty and funny and I'm really liking their involvement. And I just, we started out, as I said, two characters, kind of very simple plot lines. And there's all these characters now coming in and there's all these different things that are sort of weaving together. So it's very entertaining. I'm really, really having a fun time. So that is my update for now. As I said, I've got what, 60-ish pages, something like that. I just have this much left. I think I'm just gonna like, turn my camera off right now and sit down and finish this. And um, I'll probably talk to you guys tomorrow, let you know how this book went. And then I think the next book that I'm going to read is Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling, which is a pretty popular book I've seen on Book Talk and Bookstagram and just all over. So I'm excited to pick that one up. I know that one has dragons as well. And I've just heard good things. I'm excited about it. So I think that's the next book I'm going to pick up. And it's on my TBR, which is fantastic. I was going to abandon my TBR for like all of the book mail that I the other day, but I'm gonna stick to my TBR because I am very excited about all the books on my TBR and go with that. And then, you know, just add a ton of fantasy romances to my July TBR. So I feel like that's a win-win. So that is my update for now. I'm gonna go finish this. Wish me luck. 
I'm about to dive in. All right, I will talk to you guys tomorrow once I am done with this. Hello friends, it is time for another reading update. I just filmed a video, so I'm looking extra fancy with my bows. So I thought, why not film? This is a good time to do it while I have makeup on. I am very excited because I have finished a book and started another. So number one, I finished The Witch Collector and oh, I, I loved this book. I loved this so, so much. I gave this four stars. It's a very, very strong four star. I just had a couple critiques, but overall, this is fantastic. 100% think that you should read it. I had such a good time. There is such an interesting world here. I am so excited for book two. The way that this book ends, I'm just like, let's go. Second book is going to be amazing. I feel like it's going to be very much of an adventure book and I am I just cannot wait. Overall, I thought that this book was just really, really a great start to a fantasy romance series. I really liked our characters. I liked the wintry setting. Definitely, if you are the type of person who likes to read certain books that give you certain vibes, seasonal vibes, during that season. This is such a winter book. So it's like weird. I'm recommending it to you now in June. You should read it now, but if you really do want to save it, this has the most like wintry imagery and they spend like 75% of the book talking about how cold they are. But overall, I just think that it's super solid, very wintry in the forest vibes. I really liked the romance in this. I'm very excited to see where it goes. I just thought that this book was so much fun. I'm so happy. And the writing was beautiful too. Really, really liked the writing. So just for my two little critiques, little just have to say my piece on them. I did talk about the pacing, a little bit of pacing issues. This book isn't too long, so it wasn't a situation where, oh, the middle was so boring and it's 600 pages. Oh my God, like I hate my life. It was fine. It was just like a moment of like, okay, I feel like we can speed things up a little bit. And then number two, just something that I want to share so that you can go in with managed expectations, I guess you could say. This is advertised as enemies to lovers and it is simply just not enemies to lovers. They're just, they're straight up not enemies. This is a situation where our main character hates this guy for whatever reason, but the witch collector has no enemy feelings towards her. Okay, honestly, something that I just feel so strongly about, and this is not like, I'm not talking about the witch collector specifically because I really enjoyed this book, but overall, can I just say, I feel like enemies to lovers is so rarely actually enemies to lovers. I want two characters who hate each other on both sides. I feel like so often, particularly in fantasy romance, the enemies to lovers situation is our main character. She has some preconceived notion about the male love interest. She has heard terrible things. Oh, he's this big, bad, dark Lord. He's awful. He's terrible. It's whatever. And a lot of it is just assumed or a lot of it is just a misunderstanding. So she's like, oh my God, you're terrible. I hate you. I have all these reasons to dislike you. And then he's over there like, I literally just have dark hair. Like, that's why you think I'm a bad person. And I have absolutely no issue with you. I don't even know you. Like, what's going on? And then that gets marketed as an enemies to lovers romance, and it is simply not. And I am begging, begging the fantasy romance gods to give us pure enemies to lovers. I want a couple where both people hate each other. I want enemies. I want, like, angry feelings. And obviously we want a couple that is like healthy and not super toxic, but it's like, this is the fantasy genre. I feel like things, you know, we can, we can go a little further. I can suspend my belief a little bit more. And I just want two characters who hate each other, but are attracted to one another to begrudgingly fall in love. That is what I am looking for. And I just feel like so often enemies to lovers is girl making assumptions, boy with dark hair, fall in love and then oh that's enemies to lovers so just a psa i just needed to get that off my chest because i feel like it is so so common and i want hatred okay i want hatred i want knife to the throat on both sides i want you are so irritating, I can't stand you, or we have like this blood feud because our families hate each other and I truly hate you for what your family did. And then, but you're kind of cute and I'm having feelings that I don't want to feel and they're fighting their feelings so hard and they're butting heads the whole book, like truly butting heads and then they fall in love. That's, that's what I want, but anyway. That's a tangent. This book was really fantastic, but I will say it's not enemies to lovers, straight up. It's it's just not. And I think that you will enjoy yourself more if you go into it knowing, okay, this isn't really enemies to lovers. This is more reluctant allies to friends to lovers. Truly, that is what I would call this. And that's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like this. I really liked watching our two characters who have such different backgrounds, who come from such different worlds, who don't know anything about each other to have to work together to survive and have a common goal. And it was very, very fun to see their romance develop. So that is my review of The Witch Collector. I'm very happy. This is a four star. I have had this book on my TBR for so long. It's been on my want to read on Goodreads for such a long time. And I'm really glad that I ended up loving it. I ordered the second book. I'm gonna be reading that in July and I'm very, very excited because I've heard the second book is even better. So 
you guys should read this. All right, and then I started my next book for this reading vlog, which is Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling, which by the way, that's just like the most beautiful name I think I've ever heard, Olivia Rose Darling. She wins a life. I am 107 pages into this book, and I <laughs> have such interesting feelings about this book. 99% very positive, like, oh my god, but 1% kind of funny, and I don't really know how to like put this all together, but I'm just gonna say very quickly if you don't know what this book is about this book follows Elowen. she is a princess when she was born she was bonded with five dragons but her father, who was the king, kind of felt like this was going to be a threat to him and his power, so he ended up locking Elowen away for 10 years, and she was essentially a prisoner in her own home. But she ends up escaping with the help of her uncle when she's 10 years old, and then she kind of creates her own kingdom that is hidden away from everyone, and a lot of people think that she is dead. However, she has been kind of secretly away and has this kingdom that is kind of a refuge for all of the people in the surrounding kingdoms, and sort of just living her life. Well, a commander named Caden from a nearby kingdom ends up finding out that Elowen is who she is and she's still around and he wants her help in a heist to go get the five dragons. He thinks that having Elowen on his side for an impending war would be very beneficial and obviously Elowen is the only person who can get these dragons to do what she says and so the two of them kind of begrudgingly team up along with one of Elowen's friends and then two of Caden's friends and so the five of them are going to do a heist into Elowen's father's castle to steal these dragons. Plot 10 out of 10. Say no more. Gorgeous plot. The characters so far I've really really Liked them. I think that they're really fun. And I love the found family. I love the banter in this book. I love how quick paced this is. I read 100 pages, but truly I just flew through those 100 pages. This book flies. It's really, really great. So like, here's, here's how I'm feeling about this book. I'm loving this. Like, I cannot... I'm, I'm so excited by this book. It is so much fun, pure fun, pure happiness while you're reading this book. However, some of the dialogue is so cheesy and I don't know. I, I just don't really know, like I'm loving it so much, but there are moments where I'm like, okay, the banter is sometimes turned up a little bit too high. Sometimes the wisecrack sarcasm is just so intense. I'm loving this so, so much. I'm having so much fun, but the dialogue is just, it's a, it's a bit much at times. And so I think that there's going to be some people who they pick up this book and they're going to be like, nope, it's a little too cheesy for me. And then there's going to be others who are like, I love the banter and I think it's fun and I think it's silly. And I think that that's where I sit with this, but I just want to, you know, speak to everyone who's watching this video because we all have different tastes and I just want to be very open with kind of my interpretation of this book and what's going on so that you know what you're walking into. I think this is the type of book that you read and that you love because you love the characters, you love the found family, you love the silly, at times a little over the top, but overall fun banter. And you're here for this romance that is happening between Elowen and Caden. And I think that's where I sit. That's kind of where I'm just gonna leave it for now because I am really loving this. I am having so much fun. I think that the best way that I can describe this book is it's pure fun. It's fast paced. It's an interesting plot. It's simple. We have some fun characters and I think it's going to serve that purpose, right? It's going to fit in kind of that category of fantasy romance. And that's going to be some people's cup of tea and not some people's cup of tea. So that is kind of my first impressions of this book. And I hope that I continue to love it. So that is going to be this update. It is Friday night right now. And I think tomorrow I'm just going to spend a lot of time reading, editing, hanging out. Sunday, I don't think I'm going to be reading very much because we are taking my nephews to the zoo and I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun. I don't know who's more excited for the zoo, me or my three-year-old nephew, but we're going to have a great time. And so I probably won't be doing too much reading on a Sunday, but I want to check in with you all tomorrow. I want to make some headway in Fear the Flames and kind of give you my thoughts and see if my feelings progress at all. But hopefully I continue to enjoy this one. Hi besties. Happy Monday day. I didn't read too, too much yesterday, as I said, just because we went to the zoo with my family and my nephews, so I was busy. I did read a little bit more of Fear the Flames, but I've also read some this morning, and I'm so excited to talk about this book. But I do have some more book mail that I wanted to show you all. I opened these two books this weekend, so I didn't get to show them to you guys on camera, but... The first book is City of Ruin, which is the second book in the Witch Walker series by Sharissa Weeks. And as I said, while I was reading The Witch Collector, I knew I wanted to order the second book because I was really loving it. I'm so excited to read this book. This is probably gonna be one of my first reads of July. I have heard that the second book is absolutely
absolutely fantastic and like the favorite in the series and has an insane ending. So I'm really, really looking forward to picking this up. I feel like as long as this book goes well, this Witchwalker series is going to be a new all-time favorite fantasy romance series for me because I thought that the first book was really, really strong with a few flaws. I'm just hoping that the books just get better and better. So very excited to read this. And then totally straying from fantasy romance, I got the fourth installment in the Chestnut Spring series, which is Reckless by Elsie Silver. I am dying to pick this up. I am so, so excited to read Theo and Winter's story. I love this romance series so much. It is potentially my all-time favorite romance series. I think Elsie Silver can really do no wrong. I really connect with her writing style. And so far I've really loved all of her books and uh, I'm just, I'm so excited to read this. I will probably read this after I finish up this vlog just to do a little palette cleanser before I continue on with the rest of the fantasies on my TBR this month. All right, and then I do have a box and I'm gonna open up two books here. All right, so the two books, number one is Heavenly Bodies. I recently talked about this in my fantasy romances that I wanna read this summer, my like fantasy romance TBR for the next few months and Heavenly Bodies was on that list. Very, very excited for this. It's quite thick, but I have seen that this book has really beautiful writing and I think it has a pretty interesting plot. So I'm excited to get to this. And then also we have, oh my God, this book is huge, Bound and Barbed. It's not quite huge by like length, but I just feel like dimensions of this book are rather large, but I'm excited for this one as well. Another super beautiful cover, another fantasy romance that I want to get to this summer and I've heard good things about. All right, so now it is time to talk about Fear the Flames. I am 50% of the way done with this book. I think I'm around high 300, something like that. And I have to say, I am loving this book so much, you guys. I am obsessed. I'm fully obsessed. I am having so, so much fun reading this. This is one of the funnest reading experiences that I have had the entire year. From like pure enjoyment, I just feel totally transported when I'm reading this book. I feel like it is so much fun. This book has incredibly likable characters, has a really fun plot, and the romance is getting really fantastic. And I'm just like, I don't really know how to put all my thoughts and feelings together when I definitely obviously had uh, criticisms early on in the book for some of the dialogue being cheesy. Like, and it's, it's there. I don't know though, part of me feels like as I'm reading more, the cheesiness is less frequent or I am being gaslit by this book. Either way, I'll, I'll take it. I just am enjoying it so much more and some of the complaints that I had early on aren't bothering me anymore. And I feel like, in my experience with my reading taste, if there are things about a book initially when I start it that I have like a couple issues with, there are a few things that can happen that can take over and maybe make those issues not stand out. And that is interesting characters, fun romance, fun plot. And I feel like this book has all three of those things. It's really, really giving me just the most like happy, carefree, adventurous vibes. This book also gives me a little bit of like early Throne of Glass vibes, not like in plot or anything like that but just kind of the general vibe and mood of like Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. It kind of reminds me of that time and obviously really love that. This book also reminds me, once again, not in plot, but just how it's written and characters and things like that. It does remind me a bit of Fourth Wing, kind of that like, you know, fast paced, found family, funny characters type of situation. Fourth Wing was another book that the biggest thing that I take away from Fourth Wing was it was so much fun. I had such a good time reading that book. It has some flaws, absolutely. I don't think it's a perfect book by any means but I gave it five stars because I truly loved the characters, the plot, and I had such a good time. And Fear the Flames is like kind of just slowly turning me around on it. I don't know, this book is charming me and I am completely in love with the characters. Like, oh my gosh, I really, really love our main character, Elowen. I am obsessed with Caden Vellis, who is our love interest. He is amazing. And we also have our side characters of Ryder and Saskia, who are fantastic and funny and quick-witted, and Finian as well. I like him. I don't know where he is right now. He's like, nowhere to be found at the moment, but I like what I've seen of him thus far. So that's kind of where I'm at with this book. Um, as I said, I'm about halfway done. I kind of want to attempt to finish this book today, which might be a lot. I have about, I don't know, 300, 350 pages left of this book and I have read a 300, 350 page book in one sitting before. So it's definitely possible. It's just if I want to do that. I just haven't finished a book in like five days. I think because most of my June TBR is like fantasy books that are over 500 pages. So I'm just like trying to get through these. Definitely want to get this vlog up in a timely manner. So I don't know, but guys, I'm loving this so much. I, I really need to know if you've read this book and if you love this book, how did you feel about the dialogue? How did you feel about things overall? I just, 
I don't really care that the dialogue was cheesy in the beginning because now it's just not really bothering me and I also don't feel like it is as frequent. But overall, I do think that this book is super, super strong and really, really fun. And at the end of the day, I read for escapism and for entertainment and that's essentially it. So this book definitely hits both of those boxes very, very well. So we'll see what I end up reading this book. I'm gonna hold back on kind of you know, overall things, because obviously I have a lot of book left and my mind could be changed either way, but I am loving this so much and I cannot wait for book two already. Oh my God. Anyway, as I said, today is Monday. I am on my lunch right now, but I'm going to go back to work here in a second and finish that up. I'm probably going to spend the evening reading this though. Sean is going to be gone. So I'm going to have the house to myself. I'm going to hang out with Ivy and have a little girl's night and hopefully make some major progress in this book. I'll talk to you guys once I finish this. I'll be very excited to see how I feel by the ending. I wonder if there's going to be an insane cliffhanger, but yeah, overall this is so much fun so i'm excited by it i'll talk to you guys soon hi friends so it's time for a very exciting check-in i think the most exciting check-in of this reading vlog because last night i finished fear the flames and i am obsessed i'm so obsessed i loved this book you guys this is a new fantasy romance favorite this is a new like automatic recommendation from me. I need you all to read this, number one, because oh, I had such a good time. And particularly like the second half of this book, it just really, really sold me on the whole thing. I absolutely loved where the romance went. Number one, let's talk about that. The romance was fantastic. It was really well developed. I think we really got to know both characters. We got to see them through a lot of different situations. We got to see them have fun. We got to see more serious things with them. And this book is actually quite a bit spicier than I expected. I was pretty surprised, but like pleasantly surprised. I was excited to see that. And it definitely delivered on that front. I feel like all of the characters just got more and more developed as we went on and in a way that I really enjoyed. And I feel like I got to know them more. And it just made me love this whole group, this kind of found family that we had even more. And particularly Elowen. I feel like in the first part of this book, when we meet Elowen, she's your classic kind of girl boss, tough, badass female main character, which is like cool and fine. but. In the second half of this book, I think her character received a lot of depth that I enjoyed, that really helped me to fall even more in love with her. And there was also some pretty serious themes that took place in the latter half of the book. We learned a lot more about Elowen's past and some of the things that she has been through, and it got very dark at times. And not that learning about her trauma, you know, gave her more depth, but just parts where we got to know Elowen more in the way that she has processed the things that she's been through, kind of how she speaks about it, what she wants to do with her life moving forward. I think that it just added a layer to her, which I appreciated. I really, really think that in the second half of the book, we just got a little bit more of a serious tone, which I appreciated. And I think that it just like kind of brought a different vibe to the book that I enjoyed. And the ending is very exciting. I am so excited for book two. It comes out in 2024, no official date yet, but that'll be a book that I like pick up the second it's out. And so I am very, very happy to say that I gave this book five stars. I know that in the beginning I was like, oh, okay, the, the, the writing is, you know, some dialogue is a little cheesy. I stand by that. But this is one of the funnest reading experiences I have had all year, probably top five most fun reading experiences. I smiled through so much of this book and oh, I just love these characters so, so much. And that's really what made me fall in love. We have a fairly, you know, simple classic fantasy romance plot. We have lovable characters and um, God, I just like, I can't say enough good things about this book. It just makes me so, so happy. So please, please read this. I feel like if you are a fan of particularly like early Throne of Glass, it gives me those vibes. It reminds me a lot of Fourth Wing and the writing style and just kind of overall general vibes once again. Um, if you like Chris Broadbent's books, like I truly think that you should pick this up. I just, this book deserves all the hype, all the love. It was so, so fun. And I just, I'm so happy that I read this. I can't believe it. I, I don't know why, but I didn't really know what to expect going into it. And I ended up loving it so much more than I thought I would. It's really stuck with me. It made me so happy. And this is why I love fantasy romance. It was just so much fun. It was just so, so good. So five stars for Fear of the Flames. Very, very happy about it. All right, so now I'm gonna start my last book for this reading vlog. I am going to start Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. I have it on my bookshelf, so I'll go grab that. But I think I'm gonna listen to the audiobook for a bit while I kind of clean and do some stuff. So I will check in with you guys once I have got a little bit into Between Wrath and Mercy and let you know what I think. Hi friends, how are we doing? I have some news. I am very unhappy to announce we have my first official DNF 
of 2023. I think I have started and stopped a few books here and there, but those are usually just like softy enoughs that I'm like, eh, I'm not in the mood for this right now. I'll come back to it. However, we have our first official hard DNF. I will not be picking this book back up. And that is Between Wrath and Mercy. I am so sad. Look at this book. Like this is gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful books I own. And I am so sad that I'm not going to love it and want to keep it. I'll probably end up unhauling it because I ended up DNFing this book at around 25 to 26% of the way through. I was listening to the audiobook for a little bit in the beginning for like the first 50 pages. And I was like, okay, like I'm good with this. You know, I don't have super strong feelings either way. And then I decided to sit down with the book as well and read along. That was like a fine experience, whatever. But I am very, very bored with the characters of this book. I find them to be extremely one dimensional. I find them to have like little to no personality. And I just don't find them compelling enough to care about what is going on in this book. If you don't know, I'll just like very quickly give a synopsis because I don't want to fully get into all of it. But our main character is a 34 year old single mom. Her daughter has this magical power that makes her very valuable. She has been hiding her daughter's power though because her sister also had this power and it ended up killing her. So our main character hides her daughter away from the powers that be and wants to keep her daughter safe. Unfortunately, her daughter does get kidnapped. And so she has to set out on this journey to find her daughter. And she ends up enlisting the help of this prince who she knew from her past and they kind of have like this rocky past seems like things didn't end well between them but she really needs his help and his power and all of that and so he agrees to go along with her and help her search for her daughter so that's general gist of the book right and that's all fine and great I think that the writing is perfectly fine nothing sticks out positive or negative about the writing like solid straightforward kind of fan row but the characters are very very boring I just they don't have anything sticking out about them they don't don't have super negative qualities or super positive qualities. I saw my friend Nadia, her review of this book on Goodreads, and she said something that I just wanted to repeat because I think it bears worth repeating. Our love interest, the prince, he's like too perfect. He's just kind of like very blank, very flat. I want more of a personality. I want to get to know him as a person and I want some flaws too. Like I want a little bit of something and I got over a hundred pages into this book. It's obviously a pretty long one. So, you know, there's probably more to be discovered, of course, but I also found our main character while I liked her, she's perfectly fine, perfectly unproblematic. You know, I just, there's nothing really super, there's just nothing super engaging about her or our love interest. My favorite character in this book was the prince's best friend. He was funny. He he had jokes. He was an interesting character, but he's like a side plot. So I hate DNFing. I really, really hate it. Even though I like totally agree with the sentiment of if you're not enjoying a book, you should put it down. Life is too short to read bad books. I am all about that. I believe that. But at the same time, DNFing leaves me feeling like hollow and like just this feeling of, you know, not completing what I was supposed to. I don't know. I feel really weird about it. So I need to pick up a book like immediately after this, just so I can kind of fill that feeling within me. Just this like empty feeling, but I don't really feel like I'm going to gain too much from reading this book. And I'm such a character person. I have to fall in love with the characters, even if the plot is a mess. Like if I love the characters, I, you know, I can keep going. Unfortunately though, in this situation, I'm just not intrigued enough. Like it's perfectly fine. It's not bad. And that's the thing too. It's like usually with bad books, I have no problem DNFing and moving on. This is like a fine book. Like I'm not mad at anything in here, but I think that the characters are very boring. I just, I don't, I feel nothing while reading this. I'm not even that curious to see what happens because I just don't really feel much for the characters. So I'm very, very sad about that. I have seen some good reviews of this book. So, you know, maybe listen to those people and don't listen to me. I just, I don't know. After reading The Witch Collector and Fear the Flames, which, you know, even those books have flaws, both of them, but like, I still loved the characters and was so engaged by them and really got to know them. And this book from page one to page 100, whatever I got to, they just, they were so flat. No personality. I, I feel like I don't really know them very well. I don't think they're very well-rounded characters. So I'm DNFing, which I'm very, very sad to say, but that's showbiz. So that is that for Between Wrath and Mercy. All right, my friends. So that is going to be it for this fantasy romance reading vlog. I have to say this was such a successful vlog, even though I had a DNF because The Witch Collector and Fear the Flames, 
Are you joking? I have found two new favorite fantasy romances and it feels so good. I feel like I've had a ton of luck with fantasy romance this year so far. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself by saying that, but I just feel like it's been a very good year for fantasy romance for me. And those two books just, oh, they really, really spoke to me and I love them so much. And I am so excited to continue on with those series. I hope that you guys pick those up 10 out of 10. Recommend both with my entire chest. You guys need to read them. And I really hope that you enjoyed this vlog. I had a really, really great time. So if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the fire emoji. Please make sure that you are following me on Instagram and Goodreads. Both are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are all having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much and I will catch you guys in the next one.